wonderful to be here. And the value of surgery in ovarian cancer primary mentioned. Yes. And um, that's a very big challenge how to do surgery and what is the best patient population. So next slide. Next slide. So surgery or surgery is one of the most emotional debates in the day. from the scientific community and I will try to help to discriminate between medical intervention what surgically triggered and the discussion is what patient should be treated how so next slide please the next I cannot see the presentation next slide so, for the treatment decision-making process, we have different factors. For medical intervention involving surgical and non-surgical things. And what we have already learned from therapy, a treatment-free interval is not a good discriminator. Because even for your surgical outcome, there is no evidence that it months rather than pre interval or 15 months. There's no data for this. The same is what is the uh, resources of the center or uh, of the patient factors. And I tried to show you the algorithm where can try to balance the different factors influencing frequent decision making process. Next slide, please. Next slide. So that's a graph from try to uh, to discriminate what treatment at what time for the best treatment schedule for my individual patient. First and relapse is to relieve symptoms. So it's very important to discriminate between symptomatic and asymptomatic patients. If you have a symptomatic patient, pain treatment, ascites function, and all the things are necessary to bring the patient in a stable situation to think what can be the best way of surgery or and that's maybe also a good parallel thinking process for the primary surgery where you discuss neoadjuvant on adjuvant. How oh, I can improve the condition of my patient. And then to think what treatment is necessary and what can be the maintenance approach of the patient. Acute treatment is surgery, acute is chemotherapy, maintenance treatment is, is a treatment with PARP inhibitors or bevacizumab. There are three different cornerstones in a bearing clamp. So next slide. So that's a three cornerstone. It's more clear that you have to try to bring the patient in the cornerstone order. So other one is you have put relapse of our cancer to preserve quality of life, to preserve the control. Because up to today, there was no evidence that you can influence over survival with treatment and relapse of our But today, we have two arguments for the doctors that treatment makes sense, even over survival. And that's a desktop pre-surgery trial I will show you in, in some minutes. And second is the, the treatment was a part of for the BRCA positive patient, the solo uh, one study. Next slide, please. 
Next slide. So again, if we treat a patient with relapse of ovarian cancer, where most patients are chronic, ill, or sick, we have the idea to preserve quality of life or to improve quality of life, contribute to the survival, and overall survival. What we will discuss in every seconds. Next slide. So I started with palliative surgery. Palliative medicine is very important of many patients of ovarian cancer. And there's no doubt that surgery is a very important tool of this spectrum of palliative treatment. Androstoma, stents, all of this. And you know, palliative medicine is more than only pre-final treatment. It's support to care and to control the symptoms. Next slide. So that's one example. Lower obstruction and, and, and relapse of ovarian cancer. Next slide. That's another patient. A treatment with a fistula of the bow of the bladder. 48 year old woman, and I waited two weeks after Bevacizumab regarding the bone healing disorders. And then I did this surgery. Next slide. Next slide. And you see that's the bone obstruction and then the normal piece of the whole bone. Next slide. And you see. It was only possible to make an on block resection. Next slide. And you see the soft of like the goes a platinum resistant disease with bevacid in this case was taxol weekly. And you see the fistula, what was on the back of the letter. Next slide. And, I, and you can believe me, this patient went home 10 days after surgery. It was not, it was not human, but had a, a significant stability of her to control for two years. So that's a new analysis. We're just finishing uh, the in bowel infection, in bowel obstruction, and as you know, the 30-day mortality bowel obstruction is in general around 30 But from the year to the year, we learn to stay. Patient and even to prepare the patient, and that's our current just of the charity with a very low mortality. Very highly selected patient group, highly selected. Next slide. So, over, uh, over in cancer relapse surgery, very different memory. And you see a patient with a diaphragma and woman and a speed metastasis. And that's also underlining the need of on-block resection in every part you think in ovarian cancer. Next slide. So surgery is possible. That's not the question. The key point is what patient for what treatment to what goal. Next slide. So only from this ESCO, from Dr. Tivanovic or HIPEC, because I know many people believe in IPEC, I don't believe it, but I'm a scientist, so I love trials. And that's the reason I show you this trial without maintenance treatment, I think in first relapse, and there was no difference, even there was more negative impacts in progression-free survival and over survival for the patient with IPEC in surgery. 
So next slide. So what patient can benefit from the free during relapse? That was our hypothesis, because you have to know before you do surgery which patients will really benefit. Next slide. So, and we designed a score with a situs below 500 milliliters with a good performance status and primary surgery without with complete resection as an AGO score with this dry item. And if you use this dry item before surgery, the chance to have a complete resection, that's a blue coat, Around 70%. Independent from the center. So next slide. But if you have a negative AGO score and train centers such in our center there are many of the faculty on the faculty, in every second woman. Despite negative AGO score, we can do a complete resection. So that's the key point. Because only patients who have complete resection will benefit in terms of long-term survival from surgery. Next slide. And that was a I designed the desktop 3 trial with presentation of this year. The, the design of the study, I think you all know. Next slide. Next slide. So, again. No, go back, go back, go back. So, again. Patient with a positive AGO score with this dry items. First relapse. And subsequent platinum-based chemotherapy were randomized to surgery. Followed or only and I'm proud that our center included the most patients in the world on this road close to 100 patients and it was very difficult to motivate the patients because they want surgery they like the surgery so around one third refused to participate in the trial so now the results. Safety. Next slide, please. Next slide. Safety was excellent. I was really surprised. You see the mortality rate, you see the relaparatomy is very low. So it's a very safe treatment in a good and an adequate structure environment. Next slide. And that's even the outcome, overall survival. The first study in the world in relapse aberrant cancer with the primary objective of improving overall survival. So a benefit and overall survival. It's a huge, it's a historic event, really. It's a historic event in, in, in gynae cancer. And that's very important to see even the hazard ratio. By a surgical intervention by five to seven hours. Next slide. And you see even the subgroup analysis. The power of the, the surgery came by only complete reflected patients. So tumor reduction is not the goal. That's very crucial. So if I do surgery and I can reach complete resection, I go back and stop surgery or do only do things what is really mandatory. Or a storm or whatever. Yeah. Next slide. And I know you know there's a second trial from the American flag with a very different methodology. Not using, not using any score for selecting patients. It was based on the doctor's decision and preference to put this patient in a trial, focusing on chemo and a 
bevacizumab or surgery and then to the targeted therapy. So it was not very clear. Second, it was then the crucial part of patients from Asia. They are good patients, good doctors, but they are different populations. So that's the reason why we believe it's not the same trial design, even not the same outcome. Next slide, please. So that was the conclusion from the desktop street trial. So we believe that a patient should be offered a step surgery in a very trained center to look about the different aspects of the decision-making factors, and then to offer a, a first relapse surgery if complete result is achievable. Next slide. Next slide. So, no, no, one second, bit. sorry. So that's only an algorithm. I do surgery in my center. I do relapse surgery. Step-by-step step evolution. And have always a possibility for an exit plan. Always an exit plan. And I tried my best. It's not always possible to prevent complication. And then to re-ask my goal, my street, my destination. And for me, it's not acceptable to do a without discussing the medical It's puzzle, puzzle, puzzle. The next slide. So again, we happy to host you uh, this year in Copenhagen. And the next year, at Charity Mayo Conference 2021. Next slide, next slide. And I would be very, very happy to host you. And we do many life surgeries in cervical and the mitral of every cancer. And I would be very, very proud to see you physically without any viral interference. Thank you very much.